There's an old Latin phrase that I've always loved, and I think I love it for all the right reasons. Caveat emptor. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, uh, lex orandi, yeah. lex credendi, lex vivendi. As we pray. And uh, at, so we could just say it in, in simplified form, as we pray, so we believe, so we live. Yeah. And this idea that there's an interplay between these things, that actually how you pray is forming your belief system, well, yeah. which is forming how you live and then how you become not just a transactional prayer or even a conversational prayer, which is wonderful, but a real incarnation of prayer. Yeah. And I'd love to hear just how what we'll learn from how Jesus prays actually will help us in the becoming like him. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. it's kind yeah. of like you're saying, like, if I want to know what you believe, mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch your prayer. Exactly. Like, I'm going to listen. I want to listen and hear your prayers. That's, mm. how, that's what's going to tell me. You might say, well, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, right? Mm. But if I really want to know what you believe, let's, let's, let's talk about your prayer life. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And in Jesus' prayer life, I mean, one of the, one of the interesting things to me, like, just, just t take those nine prayers. And in John 17, you know, we have what we have historically called the high priestly prayer. Right. Well, see, I really think that's the Lord's prayer. Mm. Because mm -hmm. I think the, our Father, that's the disciples' prayer. It's the rabbinical sort of teaching he them teaches, how to pray. He, he's te giving his disciples a, a mm. form, a way of, of prayer. Now, I realize I'm going to get nowhere with that change because <laughs> it's, the Lord's prayer it's is kind of in there now. It is. <laughs> but that high priestly prayer, mm. I mean, honestly, I've not paid a lot of attention to it. I've picked some sound bites out of it. The mm -hmm. other day, though, another one of those bites came to me where Jesus says in that prayer, for their sake, I sanctify myself. Mm. Wow. I mean, that's that's the Son of God mm -hmm. who, for their sake, I sanctify myself. Mm. That's intercession right there. Right. And so there's so much. We could camp out right there and, and mm. really dig a deep well on what does it mean to be an intercessor. And... What what I've probably largely thought it meant is just asking God to do things that I can't do. And I've come to really think that m much of my own former prayer life and what I have experienced and witnessed really is far more akin to what I would call reverse delegation. Mm. When I think what Jesus is mm. trying to teach us all the way through, mm is agency mm. and authority. Right. The the authority of agency. Mm. I mean, think about mm -hmm. the Great Commission. What does he say? All authority. Mm -hmm. Heaven on earth. I mean, disciple making is about cultivating the kinds of people who can carry the authority of Jesus yeah. in love. Mm. And this the 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 sort of holy cauldron of that is fasting and prayer. I remember years ago when I was in seminary, they had this this guy. You ever heard of Dick Eastman? Mm -hmm. And he, he was leading this, you know, change the world school of prayer. And I mean, he's a saint, a saint of God, amazing. And our whole seminary like was required to go to it. It was all day, and 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 the, his thing was like the sixty minutes that changed the world. And and so he he teaches you basically how to spend sixty minutes in prayer, and. I don't remember really what I learned there, but I remember that it was very kind of technique oriented and technical. It was good, but I'm like, that's just not what how Jesus seems to do it. Jesus is talking more about authority and agency and abiding, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I, in his course... I think we only have like three three sessions. So that's going to be the problem. It's because I want to try to, you know, preach every sermon I have ever preached every time. 
And um, But I want to get into John 15. I mean, if you want to learn about prayer, spend about 20 years in John chapter 15. Back up to John chapter 14. And I, I just pulled that up. And, you know, Jesus is talking about I, the words that I say to you, I don't speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. And so, you mm. know, I, I'm just convinced that prayer is not the goal. Prayer is the means. It is a means. Yeah. Prayer and fasting are means. And that they're unto something else. They're unto, like, walking in the way of Jesus mm. um, and becoming a real authorized agent of his mm. and who really learns like prayer not as a technique but prayer like as a language mm. and it's not I often contrast what I call triangulated prayer like we're still you don't really see that in the New Testament that mm. much. You see more straight line praying. Mm. And it's interesting. One of Jesus' nine prayers, we, don't, we wouldn't even have thought of it as a prayer, but it is Lazarus come forth. Mm. That's one of the nine prayers of Jesus. Mm. And he's not at the at the tomb. Jesus does speak to his father. But he doesn't get a knee and say, Father, would you heal Lazarus? No, he says, Lazarus, come right. forth. He's moving in authority and agency. See, Jesus is an agent of the Father. And he, so he's trying to actually bring us into his agency relationship with the Father by the Spirit. And that's just not how I've understood prayer for the most of my journey. I've understood prayers like what you go do somewhere else to ask God to do something that, that you can't do and you hope he'll do it. And then you say, according, you know, you're able to do abundantly above all we can ask or even imagine, but I never said the next 10 words. According to your power that is at work, where in the air? No, within me, right. within you. And so th that way of prayer of Jesus is that way. And I, I scarcely understand it, which I think also makes, makes, you know, I often tell people, I'm like, you know, I'm not an authority on prayer. I'm not an authority on anything. Certainly not the authority. Jesus is the authority. But he gives us, he gives me authority. I am one who carries authority, but it's it's because he's given it to me. Yeah. And he's teaching me how to exercise it for the good of the world and the glory of God. So in those nine prayers, there, there's an entire curriculum right there that, that for the rest of our life. 